this is not a reactionary piece for me. So, you know, my number one matchup is the Minnesota Vikings defensive line against the Buffalo Bills offensive line. That Minnesota, I would actually say their front as a whole. This isn't just a reaction to this past game against the Jets and the potential Josh Allen injury that we're seeing and reading and hearing all these rumors about. Again, like I mentioned, Josh Allen was the most pressured quarterback in the entire NFL last year in the regular season, second most if you include the postseason. Now, yes, some of that from a volume standpoint is because, well, you know, like they pass a ton, and if you pass a ton, you're probably going to get pressured more. Again, it makes sense, correlation and all that kind of stuff. But so much of their pass protection game last year, and even this year to a degree, was like, eh, it's okay, Josh will make something happen. And I just felt that that piece was unsustainable. So and like, asking him to be Batman over and over and over again was too much of an ask, not just for him, but for anybody. Like to ask somebody to be that on point that much, it's a very hard thing to do in the professional world of the NFL when you have professionals who are also good at their job on the other side of the ball trying to attack you and get you out of those you know, comfort spots. The Bills have struggled traditionally against higher-end talent of players up front. At best, I think as a group, they're a middling offensive line. Like they're not, they're not the worst line in the league. They're also not a top 10 league. Most weeks they're anywhere from like uh, 13 to 18, but they will have more moments where they creep into the mid twenties than weeks where they creep into the top 10. And you're coming off a week where Quinn and Williams had himself a day. Bryce Huff had a good day. Jonathan Franklin Myers was a monster. Carl Lawson looked good. And now you come into a game where the Minnesota Vikings, and I feel like this isn't too known, I would say even league-wide, but especially amongst Bills fans, Zadarius Smith and Daniil Hunter. I think more people know Daniil Hunter because he was a potential trade target for a lot of Bills fans this offseason. Daniil Hunter's having himself a year, right? He's tied for 14th in pressures. He has five sacks. He's playing the run well. He's long. He's physical. He's violent, fun, awesome. He's good. He's kind of the number two. Because the number one is Darius Smith, who leads the entire NFL in pressures, not just amongst edge defenders. Every single player in the NFL, he leads the entire NFL in pressures, according to PFF. He's tied for third in sacks with eight. And now you might also be saying, yeah, but you know what? He probably, he probably gets a ton of pass rush snaps. That would be false. He's 38th out of 200 defenders in pass rush snaps. So he's efficient with what he's doing. Then you also add in the other pieces, like you mentioned of how they use him and they'll, you know, they'll line him up in the a gap. They'll line him up over the guard. They'll flex him late. They'll drop him into coverage, all these different chess pieces. He also, for somebody, I love it when good pass rushing edge defenders also play the run. And he had multiple snaps against Washington. And this isn't unique to his time in, in Minnesota. He did it in green Bay as well. He'll get upfield so hard. And then it turns out to be a run and he just plants that foot in the ground and spins back and gets back to his gap. And he makes the tackle for like a one yard gain or a two yard gain. He plays the run hard as does Daniel Hunter and Hunter's got that length and that size. Smith is a big guy as well, but I think he plays the run with just more of a motor and a speed and a tenacity. And he also uses that in his pass rush and both he and Hunter, They've got hand technique. They've got the proverbial like beat the hands, beat the man type of moves. So Darius Smith has a variety of spin packages that he can use on you and rip and bend, convert some speed to power. Daniil Hunter can use that length and that long arm, but he's still athletic for a lanky, bigger guy. The Bills have struggled with premier types on the defensive line, not just this year, but these past several years. And they're coming off a week where they did not look good, particularly on the interior. But nonetheless, you had some reps where Deion Dawkins got beat. You had a, you've had issues at right tackle the entire year. Spencer Brown, if he plays, he's been practicing this week. Maybe he plays. He's still on that roller coaster in his second year. Sometimes you're like, oh, man, look at this guy. And then other times he, he dips and you're just like, oh, man, like look at this guy as he gets worked. Quisenberry got beat by Bryce Huff on the hit that injured Josh Allen's elbow. This defensive line on the outside is threatening. And then – you take the pieces on the inside. I already mentioned Harrison Phillips, who Bills fans are familiar with. I also like Jonathan Bullard. Like, I like what he does. I like how he plays with leverage. He, he's a big dude, like, which again, most dudes are in the NFL, but he doesn't play high. He doesn't come out of his stance and stand straight up. He plays with lean. He plays with leverage. He uses his hands. They have a good front. And again, if we're into this world where if the Bills can't run and, okay, now they have to put more under the shoulders of Case Keenum. Do Hunter and Zadarius Smith eat? Or again, even if it's Josh Allen, okay. Jets got the Josh, Josh Allen last week. And I think Quinn and Williams, obviously, is on the interior. Quinn Williams is, is, is a stud. 
The Vikings have two. Like, Zadarius Smith is very, very, very real. I And I, I feel like people don't know it. If you asked 10 people who leads the league in pressures, I don't think one of those 10 is saying Zadarius Smith. I do not think that. I think they're going with, okay, Max Crosby, Aaron Donald, maybe somebody says Quinn Williams because he's a New York guy and everybody, you know, that media market gets tons of coverage. Zadarius Smith is a hell of a player having a hell of a year and they're a nice one, two punch. And then you add the functional rotational pieces they have on the interior. That's where my head is focused on this game because in both the pass and the run, right? Because again, the Vikings are light boxes 73% of the time, the most in the entire NFL, but then against the run 29% light boxes, which is the fourth most, if they can fit it with just the front four and then having their two linebackers, if they want to rock those penny fronts, like, yeah, like green Bay did um, as well. How does that Buffalo offensive line gel? How do they handle if they start to run some games, if they start to run some simulated pressures or some creepers, if they start to mug gaps with Kendricks and Hicks, and then they drop them out is the interior committed. And then you're putting your tackles on islands. I think this matchup sets the tone for everything for the Buffalo bills offense. I recognize the secondary pieces and the matchup of Stefan Diggs against the Vikings secondary, which I think is advantage Stefan Diggs. But like I mentioned earlier, that doesn't come into play if you got to get the ball out in like 2.1 seconds because that pass rusher is getting home or Josh Allen or Case Keenum constantly are getting pushed off their spot because the Darius Smith is slicing inside or you're getting pressure on the interior. Like there's a lot of ways in which this Vikings defense up front can affect the bills offense. And again, they have to, because they're a four man rush team because they're a light box team. Um, and just for numbers too, to put in perspective, they reuse four man rushes 80% of the time which is, you know, ranked as sixth most in the league, but it's the same percentage as the Buffalo Bills. And all Bills fans know how much they rush for. We keep talking about it, you know, the parallels and the similarities. The Vikings are very similar defense overall, but especially in that front, same goal, same mind, too high, light boxes, rush with four, fit with the front in those light pieces. There's some horses up front, and the Buffalo Bills coming off a game where one horse in Quinn and Williams and a bunch of good B-plus players caused havoc, now you're playing a front that has a defensive line with several B to B plus players and then two A's, two horses. How do you hold up? I think that's a huge, huge point of contention for this game. Yeah, I I know I said it before. I always think of offensive line like you really want to have just like five good guys, right? Like if you have one really real superstar and one kind of eh, guy like that, that is really where I think you fall into problems because defenses can figure out ways to get uh, kind of isolated matchups, right? And the same way that, you know, Diggs and Jefferson dictate coverage, I think Z Smith does dictate the front in a in a, in a specific way in mm-hmm. that, like, versus Washington, um, he was lined up kind of over the guard, so center and guard are kind of doubling him, right? Which, if you have five offensive linemen and four defensive linemen, that makes sense, right? Like, two are gonna, is going to end up in some sort of way. But that means that the defensive line gets real kind of pure, clean one-on-ones elsewhere, which is often, right? Like, that's going to mm-hmm. happen kind of everywhere. But if you're winning those, that is... Like that is deflating on the offensive end, right? And I like that, like the world of pass rush, it's not just sacks, right? We can't just think about it as sack numbers. Pressure, pressure is pressures, yeah, right? Like think about it, please think about it as pressures instead of just sacks, right? Because if you are constantly having your hand in the face of the quarterback, if you are forcing the quarterback off their spot, right? If you are getting your hands up in the passing game, it doesn't matter what's happening on the all 22 behind that, right? Like that, the, the meat of the play, is happening right in front of the quarterback's eyes, right? And anything that can speed the quarterback up, can mess with their feet, right? Can force them off a read quicker because their their clock is ticking a little bit extra. That is so, so important. And I think the Vikings can get away with some of the, again, I don't like using the word softer, but like you can get away with some things on the back end when you're attacking like that on mm-hmm. the front end. Yeah. Uh, and like Zara Smith is going to win a matchup on Sunday, right? Like there's just no way around that. And the last two matchups playing against Kyler and Heineke, like where they have their edge rushers box and that middle guy or Z Smith in the middle kind of doing things like you guys got to watch Daniel Hunter. Like he is so non-traditional in like the, just like the way he like sets up moves. It's, it's like, I can't even say if it's good or bad. It's just so different. Right. I think like, like, yeah, tackles talk about it all the time. Like they're just like, it's just like a weird thing to prepare for. Cause like you're not even sure what his pass rush plan is. No, Cause like he moves it's so like, weird. Like style dancing. Yeah, yeah, it's so it's so interesting. And, and look- he strings moves together out of like <laughs> like it, it, just the way he like steps and shifts and the way his hands can move mm-hmm. in conjunction with his feet. But the way he does it, like he had a couple 
outside rushes that he executed from like <laughs> on the inside shoulder of the tackle. And I don't know if it's because his like his stride is so long and he's able to do it, but I was just I literally rewound and I was like how the hell did he get outside like that? Like he's just a, a pterodactyl and a freak of nature there. Yeah. I think one of his sacks, it was like Heineke was, he was like 10 yards deep and he didn't step up. And like, obviously the criticism is like, yeah, well a tackle can't like physically block someone that yeah. deep because like the angle is just obviously in the defensive end's favor. So you need the quarterback to step up. But if you have Zadarius Smith on the inside, like that is going to be a problem, right? Like you can't just step up when like my guy has like both of his paws on your face, yeah. right? Like you just can't do if that. The right? If so the depth of the pocket yeah. is breaking and compromised, you cannot step up and that's a problem. Yeah. So I do that. I like that the bill are the Vikings have faced, you know, like they did a decent job kind of boxing Kyler Murray and obviously Heineke as well, who's like obviously a different athlete. Um, not that he's not a good athlete, but like having that in our back pocket. Yeah. The last kind of two games, if we see Josh Allen, you're not going to contain him. Right? It is impossible to, but at least having a plan, right? And mm -hmm. like, it's hard for any team once a quarterback breaks the pocket. Or when these guys break the pocket, it's like, well, like that's when you kind of get nervous when you're watching a little bit. But having a full pass rush plan that ha they've executed, I think, pretty well the last two weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I'm excited to see that, right? Like, you, so much of your offense, like, you can have the fanciest, schmanciest play called up, you can have the best players on. The field, if you cannot block up front and the defense is constantly kind of getting hands in your quarterback's face, you can't, you cannot find success. And I think maybe it's just as simple as the team that pressures the other quarterback more wins, right? Like it, it may just, <laughs> it may just be that simple. And it's fun that we have two really, really good uh, defensive lines against two offensive lines who we feel good, but maybe not great about, right? Yeah. So I'm, I'm just, excited, right? That's something you can see on the TV copy, right? You don't even really have to go to all 22 to figure out. Mm -hmm. Well, my like my guard's getting his butt kicked, right? So it's you know, who's gonna eat, right? That's it. People are going to, right? So it'll be it'll be fun to see <laughs> almost a competition between the the kind of the two sides who's getting after the quarterback a little more. I think that's a beautiful way to sum it up. Like I was thinking it as you were saying it. It really comes down to which defensive line is able to dominate more and which offensive line is able to mitigate that mismatch and that disadvantage more. However, they do it in whatever way. Like that, I think, really is what decides it because you've got two defensive lines with studs, two defensive lines that really are the engines of their defense. And yeah, going up against two offensive lines that have vulnerabilities at different spots for different reasons. And that's what it comes down to. And then you add in the variability of, you know, Josh Allen and the Case Keenum piece, and everything stems from that initial trench warfare on both sides of the ball. And oh, yeah, it's going to be exciting to see.